The Catholic Church has repudiated the doctrine of discovery, documents that say any land not inhabited by Christians was available to be discovered and indigenous peoples could be overthrown. Indigenous leaders are saying there's still a ways to go and there are things the Canadian government can be doing to respond to this repudiation. There has to be a very fair and just process to ensure that the land that rightfully belongs to our people is returned to us. And so that's one of the legal challenges that, uh, that Canada faces when it, when it comes to uh, their relationship with our people. So how is the Canadian government reacting to news out of the Vatican? Mark Miller is the Minister of Crown Indigenous Relations, and he joins us now. So, Minister, after this move by the church, former AFN National Chief Phil Fontaine talked about returning land that belongs to Indigenous people. Is that what the outcome of the repudiation of this doctrine means for Canada, in your opinion? Well, I, I think it means a number of things. First, it, it's big because the Vatican had consistently at least maintained that these papal bulls had been revoked in the 16th century on a, a, some flimsy excuse that uh, states were were, uh, were behaving worse, and it was just a power dynamic between them. There's no uh, thought at the time for indigenous groups and, and their continued evangelization specifically to Christianity. Uh, and so this represents a big step in the Vatican's thinking, driven by the current Pope, uh, and thanks, frankly, to the advocacy of a number of Indigenous groups, many of them were in Canada pushing very hard uh, during his visit to make sure that these papal bulls, which are racist in nature and had perpetuated the land dispossession and, and disrespect um, that is ongoing and the effects that are still felt today. Now, now Canada is a secular state. It's been so for some time. Uh, but there are effects that permeate our current laws and, and the assertions of Crown sovereignty that underpin them. It isn't necessarily a linear uh, trajectory from the papal bulls that are Catholic in nature to uh, the Crown sovereignty from Britain particularly, but there are elements of French law intertwined. So this is a complex web of, of, uh, of, of laws that need to be re-examined, particularly in the light, and this is something that we're doing as a, as a government in, the, in light of the implementation of the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. Um, so this is definitely part of the discussion. Uh, first and foremost, it's about ensuring that Indigenous peoples, at, when they are in a relationship with the Canadian government, are on a place of equals. And that includes a re-examination of these under, underlying, underpinning, radical assertions, as the Supreme Court would state, of sovereignty that has characterized uh, our legal system. So uh, it has the potential to be earth shattering, but what it certainly is not is, is asking people to go back to Europe or, or give their homes back. This is about our relationship with indigenous peoples and working with them on a, on a stature of equals. And I'll, I'll ask you to be specific now, what changes, what policy changes will there be in Canada to reverse the precedents that have been set in Canadian courts? Well, what the precedents in Canadian courts, particularly, uh, a series of three or more Supreme Court cases have said is that these doctrines are no longer valid. So it is a death knell, uh, a further death knell in these racist documents that have um, that have underpinned these assertions of sovereignty of the Crown, both provincial and federal. But and Minister, I'll, I'll just stop you for a second, Minister. The doctrine of discovery Absolutely. was used in Canadian courts as recently as 2014. Look, that's correct. And there are, I'm not going to deny that there, there, there are still effects that are felt today throughout the laws that we assert and impose on Indigenous peoples. The Constitution is one of it, the Indian Act is another, uh, and as part of our implementation of the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, uh, that law calls on us to re-examine all our laws in that light, in the light of this revocation. But what it also clearly says uh, in its preamble is that these doctrines and ones of uh, similar nature are no longer uh, are no longer of, uh, of any value or, or effect. Now, um, Rightly so, Indigenous groups will say, well, those effects are still, 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 still felt in the way that governments react and relate to Indigenous groups, do not treat them on a position of equals. And that is uh, the moment that we are in as a country, but it is a moment uh, that has to be understood in the context of, of equals, in the context of the demands that Canadians and Indigenous people are making on governments in, our, in the position such as mine, to take stock of that and move forward and sit down with Indigenous communities and say, well, how do we document our relationship uh, here on in, uh, as opposed to the paternalistic way that we've done so in the past. So, yes, it's complicated, but it's something I think that we're uh, we're up to as a country. And, and so, you know, Indigenous uh, 
Groups would like to know why the government hasn't implemented the repudiation, for example, by acknowledging Indigenous nations have uh, the right to control their land uh, and how it's developed, including by approving or vetoing resource development. You know, these are all discussions that need to be had, and I cannot jump to the end of what this discussion will be without uh, ensuring that we're having a process that makes sense and that is respectful of Indigenous communities and engagement. Clearly, there are some acts of the state in Canada that are no that are, that are not acceptable, that are continuing to be perpetuated. Uh, you gave uh, one of those examples, but there is a clear path forward, and it's one that is not only being uh, driven by presidential Supreme Court judgments, but now by a government that is willing to engage on a basis of equals with Indigenous communities, which has not happened in the past. And I think that's important to recognize. Uh, the implementation of the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples is going to be a messy proposition. And I think as a government, we need to get used to this lack of comfort, this lack of control, and sometimes the fear that accompanies that. But that's about bringing everyone along. And it's not something that can be done in a vacuum in a boardroom in Ottawa. It has to actually be done on the ground with Indigenous peoples and tracing that path forward. Uh, I think you see a lot of goodwill in that space, um, but you, I will acknowledge that at times you also do see some fear and some setbacks. So that's where we are as a country, but it, it, is, a, it is an important moment in this time. And I do want to recognize first and foremost, the work that's been done by Indigenous groups that have never thought they would be in this place today. And it is thanks to them that, that we are here. And, and Minister, you know, I'm appreciative of your time on this issue, but, you know, largely, as we've been discussing, this is a justice issue. Why aren't we hearing from the Justice Minister on this? Well, I think certainly you will be. I mean, he and his team are, are deep in the depths of, of driving this, uh, this implementation plan on the, uh, on, 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 on the United Nations Declaration of Rights of Indigenous Peoples pursuant to C-15, the law that we passed uh, well over a year ago. Uh, that's complicated stuff. A draft came out. It isn't perfect, but we can't start, as I, as I mentioned, we can't be doing this in a vacuum. We've got to get these action plans out. We have to be subject to criticism and get out of our comfort zones as governments. And I think you will, you will hear him uh, increasingly so speaking on these matters uh, that are, you know, that are legal in nature, but are also very profound and emotional to to the fabric of, a, of our country. So much more to discuss, but unfortunately, we've got to leave it there for now. Uh, that's all the time we have, but I appreciate your time today. Uh, that is Mark Miller, Minister of Crown Indigenous Relations. Thank you.